I'm Keith Bridewell, Brookledge Sugar House. I've been at this for a long time. I started when I was 10 years old, not obviously this big, but on a much smaller scale. And I have, over the years, it's a hobby of mine that I've never, um, never given up. I enjoy it. Um, and so, from 1974 is when I started with a neighbor of mine making just a couple gallons on an open um, open pan, and it slowly progressed into where I am today. Which, on an average year, I'm making a little over 500 gallons of syrup per year on an average year for me. So I have um, about 1,200, a little over 1,200 taps this year, which is about where I'm always been in the last few years. Um, I run a vacuum system which gives me um, a very good uh, amount of sap per tap. With the, the older style when you just hung buckets out you didn't get anywhere near as much sap per tap as you do nowadays with a good vacuum system. Um, the vacuum, the pipeline, it is doing all the collecting for me so when I come home from work or get ready to boil the sap is all collected here waiting for me. I don't even have to go um, don't even have to go looking for it. And I can show you the, um, the syrup that's being made today as it's getting ready to be drawn off. This up here is an automatic draw off which measures the, the temperature of the, the syrup. The syrup boils at 7 degrees above the boiling point of water so that at any given time during the course of a day I have the barometer up there where I can set my the draw the temperature to draw off at and the syrup will come off when it's when it's ready. Hydrometer is, is actually very very accurate and if you come in a little closer you can see there's red lines on that hydrometer. The top red line if it was to float right at that red line that would mean it's syrup. It's not floating quite at that level there. You can see it's sinking down. A, whoop, it's sinking down a little bit below that. So where I drew off right here isn't quite quite ready, but so when that when that floats at the um, when it does float on that red line, then that's another indication that the syrup is ready. After the the syrup is um, completed and drawn. I can show you where I have in here. The syrup comes in here and this is my finishing pan where I'll get it all hot to the point where I need to run it through uh, a filter press. And what the filter press does is it filters the syrup. It takes out the, the impurities, um, any of the um, the solids the sh from the, the minerals that are in the syrup. Like that sample jar right there, that is unfiltered syrup. You can see it's cloudy. If you was to take it and put it next to a, if you put that next to a, you can see one, that's, that one is cloudy and this one is much clearer. It's, um, that, this has been, this has been filtered and this is, has not been. Um, that was just a sample I pulled today of what of what I made. You take a sample of your syrup and you would put it in the and you would and you hold it up to light and I know with the camera you're not going to be able to see but you would look through there and and you that's that's a method of grading the syrup based on the how dark it is. Um, as the season progresses the syrup tends to get darker, um, stronger flavor to the point where you're making your um, cooking syrup near the end of the year. Um, your light syrups aren't going to have that strong flavor to it so that it, if you use a light syrup in, in for cooking um, you're going to be disappointed because you're not going to get a real strong maple flavor. After it's been filtered then it's ready to bottle. I store in, in um, kegs I use also uh, from there as soon as it's been filtered it can go right into the individual bottles um, like that are right behind you. Or, you know, any, any of these, these are, um, this is syrup that's been bottled and ready, ready to be sold. Quite frankly, I don't feel that the type of fuel you use has any impact on it. I mean, the old, 
many of the old people would all say they liked wood fired because it gave it a different flavor. Well, the 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 wood there's as you can see there's I'm burning wood, but it, there's no smoke that comes. If you had old pans where you know your smoke rolled around and got into the into the sap, that would maybe affect the flavor. But whether you're using oil and or wood, in my my feeling is it's not gonna it doesn't affect the flavor at all.